on. Come on. On the raptor tail, Junior. Stay on. Stay on. This bass is huge, guys. This bass is huge. This honestly might be my PB. This honestly might be my PB. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Event Sackle Talk. Today, we are doing a 1v1 MTB slam on the kayaks. Me versus Luki. Let me show you the baits in this month's box. So, let's see what we got. Alright, first thing. Actually, I already opened these. But this is the Yozuri pencil. The DB series. Nice looking pencil locker. Little 5 inch bone color, not bad. Next up, we have the Longer Hunt Shock 2.5 feet. So, this thing dives up to 2.5 feet. But you can also use it like a wake bait. Which is great because there's lots of high grass where we're fishing. And I'm just going to be running this thing just, just, just under the surface. Next up, we have the Biospun Exopods. These baits, I've heard a ton of great things about them. Never ever got a chance to use them. They look killer. I'm going to be punching with these things for sure. Bait number four now. We have the old. Classic Road Runner. This thing is like a little albino shad or something like that. Pattern. A little, little four inch finesse swim bait. A little blade. Quarter around its head. Not bad. This thing, I don't know. Because there's grass, so. I don't know how it's gonna do. But now for the bait that I'm most worried about the Castaic Loco 10 crankbait. This thing's three and a half inches, dives uh, five to ten feet. So this thing will probably get sniping grass every single cast. They'll have to find a patch of grass where there's nothing. And it weighs about a half ounce. And a nice little, uh, let's see what it is, chartreuse shad right there. <clears throat> it's not a bad bait for certain lakes, but just where we are because it's so beady right now, it won't be good. And right now it's September 3rd, so the grass is just peaking now. So that means that uh, it's going to be tough to kill the crankbait. Alright guys, one of the last things here, second to last thing, this is the Raptor Tail Jr. by Excite Baits, little green pumpkin. It's got super skinny arms and the claws get super thick, so those claws will be flapping all over the place. And last we got some Harmony Hooks, these are 4 outs. I'm probably going to be pairing those up with both the Excite Baits. Uh, Raptor Tail Jr. and the Exopod. I forgot to mention the Exopod is an Oak Trophy Craw. So, hopefully, this lineup is good. Now, time to see what Luki has. Well, folks, we just got the kayaks launched and now we're heading out to the spot. What I have tied on right now is the little spook on the SLX 7.5 medium heavy with the SLX 6.3 to 1 gear ratio 20 pound fluorocarbon but what I actually added is like a uh, a little liter a 40 pound test like 12 14 inch section of it just so that way um, if I get a pike to bite this thing which quite likely will happen because that thing just looks like a pike collar so I have a leader for that, and I also have the roller runner, which is behind me, and I also have that little crankbait, which is also behind me. I'm curious to how that the action on that crankbait is going to work. Hopefully, it runs straight. As you guys can probably tell, like I said earlier, this grass is like just cheese mat after cheese mat, which isn't bad for some of the baits I have, but others it's like a nightmare, like the the deep crank. Honestly, probably won't end up throwing that, but hopefully we get lucky and I get a chance to catch a fish on it. Probably a perch. Why not? You said he's nipping the tail. Mm. Yeah? Right 
That's just the cheapest fish ever. Well guys, here's the rig. 3 8 ounce bullet weight, pegged. Got that Raptor Tail, uh, that Raptor Tail Junior with that 4 uh Harmony Hook offset. To expose that thing. I'm just gonna be flipping the grass that's around me here. You guys can probably see it. It like, almost comes all the way up to the surface. Just gonna be flipping it around there. Hopefully, we'll find Bertha to come and eat. Just lost one. Guys, I just lost a fish on the on the crawled little raptor tail junior there. What happened was I flipped in there and he must have grabbed it as it was falling. And then he literally just swam off out into the open. And then Oh my gosh. And then he and then I saw him and I'm like and he splashed on the surface. And I'm like, what the heck is that? And I, oh, is his bait's in my mouth. Well, all he had was the front, was the back claws, so I swung because I was afraid he was going to drop it just in case he had the hooks, but he didn't, so I guess I know there's a fish under here. I'm throwing the crankbait here. If I, come to, if I get a chance to throw the crankbait, I'm going to throw it here. Right here. Come on. Come on. Little pike. Oh no, walleye. No way. Well guys, it doesn't count for the slam. Oh shoot, he shot off. But I hope you guys saw that. I just caught a little walleye on the old, the old road runner. Too bad that thing wasn't a bass, but hey, fish is a fish. Not a bad one, that was about like, Nine, ten inches on the road runner. Hopefully you guys got a good look at that before you shot it out of my hand, but I don't know, that was a nice one. There's not a ton of walleye out here this time of year, but there's some, so pretty cool sign. And to catch them on 100% artificial, usually I catch walleyes on worms or leeches or minnows, but this time, no. Just the old road runner getting it done. Well, guys, we're getting off the water right now. I'm gonna go have some lunch and then we'll probably be right back out. And right now the score is two Faluki, zero for me. Hopefully I can regain the lead. Or hopefully I can take the lead. The Pelican kayaks have been holding up nice. Hasn't been a ton of crazy waves today, but sometimes it gets to like, who knows, four footers and still trucking in them. Well guys, now we're doing a little bit of evening fishing. We didn't end up fishing after lunch today because, I don't know, we just didn't, didn't get around to it a little bit waiting for the kayaks. So, we're just gonna head back out right now. Put my box in, get my rods, and we'll be back fishing in a few minutes. I just got annihilated, guys, on the spook. He missed it though. Oh my gosh, that was a big bite. I don't know. Let's see if he'll bite again. He demolished that thing. I don't know how we didn't get stuck. He throttled that thing though. He shot that thing like a foot and a half out of the water. Come on, right up the side of the boat. Oh, it's a pike.
small guys. Just got bit by not the right species. Got a little hammer handle here on the. No, not even close on the little spook. There you go, he's off. Good, I didn't have to touch that thing. Hate pike. Well, that's the first fish on on of the day. Well, not first fish of the day, first fish of the evening for me. Sadly, it was just a little pike. And he bit right at the boat, like right, right, right there. Hopefully next fish will catch us at bass. I already caught a pipe today, I caught a walleye today. What's next? Well folks, we're wrapping up today. It's starting to get a little bit dark. Especially for being out on the kayaks, we have no lights, so. We're gonna start slowly paddling in. And we'll be back out on the water tomorrow for a spinning. We'll see you guys then. And just like that, we're out back in the morning, guys. Me and Mickey once again. We're gonna start fishing. Same spot where we fished yesterday evening. Should be down over here, where all those swans are. Hopefully we'll be able to pick off a bass or two. Come on. I don't know. Come on. I think so. Come on, stay. Shoot. I think it's a, no, I think it's a pike. Are you sure? Oh, he is a bass. Yes. It's not a bad one either. Woo! On the spook, guys. Look at that guy right there. We're just talking about changing spots. This guy came straight out of the water for that. Yes, guys, look at that fish. Nice one on the old spook. A little pencil bait. Nice guy right there. He is, how long is he? 17 and a half inches. Nice guys, a little 17 and a half incher. Right there. He's about a three pounder. Yeah. Let's get this guy back in the water. Two and a half Boom, guys. Yeah. Got the spook out of the way. That was so, so needed. Now, what we're gonna do, take the old loco yoko, tie it up. So guys, what I'm gonna show you how to do right now is how to tie a punch rig. So first you're gonna take your bullet weight. This is a one ounce tungsten. For punching, you wanna use between three quarters, uh, sorry, yeah, three quarters ounce, between there and an ounce and a half. Sometimes even more, depending on how thick the vegetation is on your lake. And I'm just tying on a four offset hook. You're gonna want a meteor hook for um, punching because you're going through grass, heavy hook sets. You don't want to bend that thing out. So I'm gonna tie on the hook here. I'm tying. I'm just gonna tie a uni knot. So how that works is you're gonna take the line, put them parallel like this, make a D. She has a D right here. And then you're gonna wrap it around the main line and the straight part of the D five times. So like I was saying before my camera battery died, you wrap it around five times on the straight part of the D and you're gonna wet it between your lips, pull that tight like this. It should look like, like this right here and then you should have a loop here, like this. Then what you're going to do is wet the loop. The reason you wet, you wet the loop is to reduce friction when you're pulling it tight. So that way your knot can be stronger and you won't break off. So once you have that tied on, cut off the tag end. I like to have the tag end as short as possible. Just because, I don't know, just how I am. So I'm going to cut the tag end. Right there. And then, when you're punching, you want to peg it. So I don't actually use pegs. What I do is I use a, 
elastic band. So what you're gonna do, pull off a chunk. A little bit tough, but here you go. A little chunk of elastic band. And all you gotta do, tie a simple little overhand knot around the line. Because once you have your overhand knot in your line, pull that tight, trim off the excess. Right there. Make sure that's nice and tight so it doesn't fall in the water. And you're gonna slide it all the way down to the bullet. I like to leave a little bit of space so that way the weight's not right on the knot, always banging into it. It got a little bit of slide so it can be like this. And then you take your bait and then you're gonna text pose this thing. So you put it down straight right down to all the way to, to covering the point, poke it out the belly, slide it up the hook, give it a 180, and then you're going to slide it up the offset, just to cover the knot as much as possible, like that, and then what you do is you measure out, okay I want my hook to be here, poke it in right here, bend the bait a little bit, send that puppy through, just like that. And what I do is to expose it, you just bury the point into the skin of the bait, just like that. And then when the bass goes to collapse it, that'll snap and look at this thing. Beauty right there. Nice little punch rig. Let's get fishing. Come on. Oh yeah. Not even kidding. Here we go. On the exo pod, guys. That's a nice one. Oh man, he's barely skin hook. Look at that. Barely by the skin. On that Okotobi Craw exo pod. Nice large mouth right there. He's pretty light though. He doesn't have a lot of black on his lateral line. That's all right. Nice largey. How long is he? He is 16 inches. Not a bad one. Once again on that exopod right there. Let's get him back. Off he goes. Boom. There we go. Now, since I know they're eating the punch rig, what we're going to do, I'm going to take this sucker off and we're going to put on that other craw. More black or less black? Come on. Come on. On the raptor tail, Junior. Stay on. Stay on. Oh yeah, he's still on there. Oh yeah, come on. That was like literally. There he is guys, Ooh, that's like a four pounder. Look how fat, oh my gosh. This bass is huge guys. This bass is huge. This honestly might be my PB. This honestly might be my PB. That is a bucket mouth. Bucket, look at that thing. Raptor tail junior, just hanging out of its mouth. Right there, that is a absolute bucket mouth. Look at that, look at that fish. Holy smokes. That's my PB. How big is he? I'll give you four and a half. 19 and a half inches. Here, I'll show you guys a little bit better. Guys, here's that right there. Mouth is at the front line, right to 19 and a half inches. Here's 20. Here is 19. That's 19 and a half. Look at this hog. Hog. Right here, guys, going back into the scum. 
boom shakalaka that yes Woo! that's what's up on that raptor tail junior i don't know how many casts with that with that thing i took this evening but not a lot oh my gosh I'm shaking that's two fish in like i don't know how many minutes 10 minutes no like five minutes but oh my gosh Cut a four and a half, maybe a bit bigger. No. Right here, a little green pumpkin seems to have done the trick. What lures do I have left now? Swim bait, or the underspin, the crankbait, and the deep crank. Okay, so what we're gonna do, guys, put the slam on hold. I'm just gonna keep flipping this thing around because I don't have any more punching baits and I just wanna keep punching. So, enjoy hopefully some more fish. So guys, that fish borderline my PB. Well, between four and a half and five. My PB was five, uh, four, four is or was, I don't know, four and a half pounds. So we'll call that one between four and a half and five is my new PB, even though it's probably closer to the four and a half side, we'll say four and three quarters. So I guess that's my new PB on the punch rig. I'm glad to have that fish in the boat. Nice one. When he bit, it was like clear as day. I flipped in there, thing hit the bottom, hit it right away, and then from that, from there on, the rest is history. I stuck him and brought, well, I guess I brought myself to him because he was so buried in the weeds. So. Yeah, that fish was awesome. The other one wasn't the biggest fish ever, about two and a half. Not a bad one though, so I'll take it. Not gonna complain. Fish is a fish. See you guys in the morning. Well, folks, it's day number three for the MTB Slam. Today I got a little something different tied on. Got that deep crank. But I also have the road runner and the shallow crank. A little, shallow, little golden shallow crank bait that I showed you guys earlier. And uh, those are the last three baits I have of the slam. Ricky has two, but he's choosing not to tie all of them on. That could hurt him, that could help him, I don't know. Help him focus on one bait better, maybe. But it could also hinder him because he doesn't get time with the other bait. So what we're gonna do is either fish in the middle first and then the far side where I caught that one on the spook yesterday, or vice versa, and we'll just start there because uh, that spot's generally better in the morning. In the middle, I just seems like a fish would go deep in the middle of the day, so. We'll probably start down on this bank and then work our way around a little bit. Hopefully we'll stumble upon three bass for me. Get the slam complete. I wasn't filming, I'm on though. Yes, guys. I wasn't filming, just turned it on before I flip this guy in. Little largemouth on the deep crank. Look at that, right there. Deep crank, a little largey. I don't care if he's small, this guy's bleeding. We're gonna get him back real quick. There he is, show him. He's like six inches, I don't care though. On my deep crank. Holy, I never had a fish do that before, water skiing. Yes, it's a great sign. Caught this fish on the deep crank in like I think that was my second cast with it. I wasn't filming because I didn't think I was going to catch any fish. There's some more loons. See them? Oh, those are woody. No, those are loons. Come on. Oh, yeah. What do I got? On the underspin. Come on. Be a bass. Be a bass. What is this? What is this? Be a bass. No, I lost them. Are you kidding me? I brought them to the boat and I lost them. No, what the heck was that? What the heck was that? Oh my gosh, look at this. Look at it on the hook, guys. I got a scale. If you guys can identify a fish by its scale, drop a comment down below what this thing is. It's like clearish, got some spines in it. That fish came off, that sucks. Gotta be kidding.
Hey guys, I don't know if I was filming for that, but I broke off. And the thing we're tying on now is a little chatter bait. But they also gave me a second swim bait for that thing, so what we're gonna do is throw that still so that same swim bait with it. Just the hard sort of have some resemblance. So what I'm gonna do is feed this thing on. There you go guys, there's the rig. Doesn't look too bad actually. Let's tie it on and catch a fish. Well guys, it's the fourth and final day today. And we're back out on the water once again with the yaks. And today, oh no, I tried to catch a fish on the chatterbait, which is replacing the underspin. And uh what's it called? The little shallow crank. So that, I don't know, it might be hard, that might be not hard. I don't know, we'll see. Let's start fishing. Come on, yep. What do I got? Oh yeah, it's a bass. I'm gonna try to bait. Woo! Not a big one there, guys, but got a little largey. Felt a bit before, oh, it came off. Just came off, guys. We were just sitting under this grass mat, I think. Right here. Throwing that chatterbait to replace the uh, the underspin that I broke off on earlier yesterday, and I casted this thing right, basically right here, against this grass edge. Got this nice little. How long is he? Nice little, say, 14 or 15 incher. About. Nice little belly on him. Got some shoulders, look at that. Nice fish, let's get him back. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Guys, now I just have one bait left to complete the slam. Just that little crankbait, which might be a little bit difficult since I'm, uh, there's lots of grass here. But anyway, what happened with that fish? Because I passed it to the edge of that weed mat. The weed mat right here in front of me and beside me. And I gave it a couple cranks. He hit it once I swung and he wasn't there. Kept reeling, kept reeling, and he smoked it again. So that fish right there is that completes how many baits? Seven? Six baits now. Now I'm on this last one right here. Hopefully I'll get a fish. Come on, yep, on the crankbait. Oh yeah, it's a largey. Oh yeah, he's dogging me. It's the next one. For the slam. Yes! Look at this, guys. On the crankbait to complete the slam. Look at that, in the gullet, down the mouth. Then hook this guy. Oh my gosh. This is a nice guy right here. This guy's probably about two, two and a half, maybe three. Right there. This guy was sitting out deeper. Let's just get him on hook here. There he is, guys. Crankbait. Largey. Right there. Let's get him back in the lake. Here he is, guys. 16 and 3 quarter inch. Back into the depths. That's the slam, guys. Completed on this little crankbait right here. I did not think I was going to be able to catch a fish on this thing. But I did manage to. So that's my second fish of the day. The slam is complete. Man, that was awesome. So guys, the slam is now complete. I finished with set, uh, six fish and Luki finished with... He got three fish or four fish? Three fish, but he got four baits because he's paired up the spinner bait and the, and the swim bait. And I finished with the seven baits because I paired up the hook and the craws. 
So, yeah, I won this one. Luki won the last two. So I got a little bit of revenge. Well, guys, that's the end of today's video. I won the slam. Had a super duper fun time fishing. I caught on seven of the baits. Luki caught on three of the baits. Too bad he lost his footage. It's not the end of the world, though. He didn't catch any real big fish. I think his biggest was like 12, 13 inches. A little largey. Oh, well. Had a super fun time. I caught three species. Pike, walleye, and bass. And the walleye really, really surprised me. I did not think I was going to catch one. If you guys like the slams, be sure to leave a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you later.